Well, thanks a lot for staying with us here on Sunrise Live on E! on this thoughtful Thursday morning. Now, the BRICS 9th Summit is expected to take place in September this year in East China's Fujian province. The theme behind this year's summit is stronger partnership for a brighter future. The relationship between China and South Africa has been growing since January 1998 with bilateral trade agreements. But since the inclusion of South Africa and the BRICS a partnership in 2010, the two countries have, uh, have had to support one another as well as work towards strategic cooperation. So joining us in the studio this morning, really to delve into further detail about this BRICS partnership, but also what does it mean for me and you uh, at home? We've got uh, in studio from a BRICS Business Council member, Stavros Nikolaou, and we invite you at home to be part of our conversation. Remember that number to dial is 011-447-1742, alternatively 1620. Also do feel free to leave your comments on our Facebook as well as on our Twitter pages. Stavros, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks. Thanks very much for having me. Now, a lot of times I'm only speak about uh, the, the BRICS uh, a partnership, we almost uh, sort of negate going into the business-to-business -business kind of conversation. And that's the perspective that you'll be coming in from uh, this morning. Just to expand a little bit about the, the role of the BRICS, uh, the BRICS Business um, uh, Council at the stage. So, Fiona, firstly, it's a, it's, it's a pretty new council. Yeah. It's five aside, so there are five Chinese, five Indians, five South Africans. So we've all got our five counterparts. Um, the, the councils, the idea of a council was incepted by South Africa and the appointments to the council are by the president of the respective countries mm. or in the case of India by their prime minister. Mm. Um, our, uh, our, our chapter, if I can call it that, um, chairman is Dr. Iqbal Serv, he's newly appointed, and then I have uh, three other fellow colleagues that sit on the council. Yeah. So now, why a business council and why not just allow the governments to speak to each other? I think we, as business people, when we went on the various bilateral and multilateral trade missions, said to our government that we get too bogged down in red tape. Government officials don't always have the appreciation of what's required operationally to make these transactions work. Their, you know, their expertise and competence lies in other areas. We're the business people that look at execution. You know, for us, yeah. the deals are about how do you go and execute them and make them work and implement them. And well, in all fairness, from a government perspective, it's all <coughs> about making <coughs> that environment um, lucrative or that n navigatable so that you can indeed make business or you can, business can thrive. So it's more of a policy front um, as opposed to more of an implementation front of, of uh, as it. So obviously working hand in hand wouldn't co be quite co necessary. Correct, yeah. correct. And, and, that's, and that's what we do. We dovetail with the government um, we meet frequently with the government. Incidentally, uh, we present the report of the BRICS Business Council every year at the summit to, to the five presidents, or mm. well, sorry, the four presidents and the prime minister of India. Yeah. So it, it does enjoy that level of contact, but we focus more on things like what are the non-tariff barriers to entry? Are the uh, issues that are getting in the way administratively or bureaucratically that need to be removed? Mm. So, in essence, what the council is about is enhancing, promoting trade, investment, and commerce well, amongst great, the five countries. You're fantastically placed on my seat this morning, and the reason why is because yes. we've been harping on about um, the, the effectiveness of BRICS, and I mean, you can appreciate the fact that with what's been happening with the respective countries, whether it's Brazil and going through their little bit of an economic downturn, etc., how does that filter down to the partnership and ultimately to the man on the street or to the businesses? But I want us to talk about the, the, the China-South Africa relationship currently. I mean, from a business perspective, are we benefiting? We saw, I think it was last year, early last year, in terms of the investment opportunities that uh, China and the money that China was putting in into the continent for developmental purposes and infrastructure development. But from a business perspective, is that filtering down? Are we going to be able to see those benefits and be able to have those, I don't know if equal is even the right word to have, that trade agreement between the two countries? So, Fiona, I think, le let me yeah, just... Faith. Uh, faith, sorry, yeah. <laughs> apologies. Faith, let me start off just by saying that BRICS is controversial to many people. Mm. And it's controversial in part because there's a feeling that South Africa has turned its back on its traditional trading partners. And I, I wanted to, certainly from a council point of view, I wanted to dispel that myth. Because in all our interactions with government, the government always says this is a new opportunity. Makes up 45% of the world's population, does the four, five BRICS countries, include South Africa in that. It, it makes up around 25% of global GDP. Yeah. 
uh, around 25% of global trade. So it's an extremely important trading block for us. But it doesn't mean that we've given up or turned our back on the EU or other trading partners, historical trading partners. Mm. All we're doing is we're pursuing um, within BRICS some very high growth markets like China, for example. Yeah. China is the second biggest market globally. It's a very big market, huge consumer demand, and it would be in future a very important market for manufacturers, which is where I come from. Mm. I come from the manufacturing sector. So to answer your question directly, what do we get out of the, the China-South Africa relationship? <clears throat> Last year, the trade between the two countries was around 250 billion rand. Mm. It's increased now in the last 12 months to close on 300 billion. Okay, so you might tell me, well, maybe that's all one-sided. But the fact of the matter is the trade deficit between the two countries shrunk from 111 billion rand down to about 98 billion. So that means some of our, ex some of our exports to China have caught up relative to the imports coming back into South Africa. Mm. So for me, that's quite a positive step. But I think what's more positive is when we've engaged bilaterally and multilaterally with our Chinese counterparts, we have put on the table with them that South Africa needs a strong manufacturing sector. And if we're going to import all our products that they're good at making and we don't export anything back to them, it's going to be a one-sided relationship. Great. I want us to hold that conversation there sure. because, because it's a very important <coughs> one. Manufacturing <coughs> sector, I'm sure you've, you can appreciate with the statistics that have come out regarding the GDP. I mean, we've had about a 0.3% growth anyways within, within the last quarter of last year. Manufacturing sector significantly down as well as the, the mining sector. So we're going to touch base in terms of how that relationship gets amended. But of course, as we said, it is a conversation that you can also be a part of. And we've, all, um, we've taken this also to Facebook. So I'm going to invite Mark Haskins. Mark? And to just to see exactly what are people saying on Facebook uh, regarding this uh, relationship and also just looking at BRICS in general. Yeah, pretty much what we say, we ask people, do you think the relationship with China has created job opportunities for South Africans or does it take away opportunities from South Africans? Yeah. And, you know, we asked our viewers, obviously, just to share their thoughts. And some of the thoughts coming through, we've got Harvey. Harvey saying that any African country that has rela relationships with China end up being poor, losing everything. South Africa is losing so much with China, co Chinese companies, I guess. Companies are being closed. That means no jobs being created. From steel to textile, all cheap materials from China. The relationship is only good for politicians, not the ordinary South Africans. South Africa put themselves in a mess. Those are Harvey's thoughts. And then Snare saying, it's Chinese that are benefiting in these relationships, not us. They can even poach our rhinos and get away with it. Well, with that, because our government does not want to upset China. This relationship is one-sided. And then, I mean, those are general sentiments coming from the public. Do you think those are fair comments? Look, I, th I think uh, there, there are some points in there that I'd agree, and there, there are others that I disagree. I mean, let's start off where I left my last comment. Exactly why I said we're <coughs> going to put a pause <coughs> on that manufacturing sector uh, aspect, right. because it's a big bone of contention in the South African market. Okay. So I think a, a, a positive, albeit a small positive for me, is that the trade deficit shrunk over the last 12 months. And it shrunk by around 12 billion rand, which is not insignificant. But we're still faced with a trade deficit with China, yeah. for order of about 98 billion rand. What are we doing as a council? What is the government of South Africa doing? We, we firstly engage, th there's a binational commission between China and South Africa, it's at the highest level, it's chaired by the two presidents, and we come in as business people. One of the things that we've agitated for is a list of 10 products that the Chinese ought to be buying from South Africa. What are Th those? These are manufactured products. Good. So let me give you an example because, Faith, you might not, uh, I come from the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical sector, yeah, yeah. I'm with Aspen. One of the things that Aspen has a pro S at manufacturing is baby infant milk formula. And everybody uses those, those tubs. Especially in light of what's happening in China regarding the contamination mm. of such. Co correct. Mm. And China is in fact the biggest consumer globally, bigger than the US, of baby infant milk formula. Mm. So we, we've sp spoken to our government to put that on the list of 10 products. And hopefully our government will be able to lobby and find common ground with their Chinese counterparts 
to create an enabling environment for those products to come into China because they're huge phytosanitary issues, they're, they're huge regulatory administrative issues that need to be unlocked for you to take baby infant milk formula into China. So it's those type of initiatives that if, we preoccupied with. If I can just ask one question, in sure. for the viewers, if you, in layman's terms, why is this relationship not one-sided? Because that's what a lot of people feel, that this relationship is one-sided. If you had to tell them and assure them that, that it is not one-sided, what, what would you say to them? So, uh, look, I think the trade numbers speak for themselves. I mean, any, it, where there's a 98 billion rand trade deficit, it is a bit lopsided, obviously. Yeah. Mm. But what we need to look at is that has shrunk mm. by the order of 11 or 12 billion rand. And the second thing is, it's encouraging for me, is... The, the discussions have shifted away from just pure trade issues to how can we co-collaborate? Where is the common ground? Mm. What are you good at manufacturing China? What is South Africa good at manufacturing? What can we sell you and we trade off with what you're selling us? But then a bigger picture, how do we work within the BRICS formation mm. to m access markets outside of BRICS as well? Yeah. By doing what, we do, uh, what we're good at doing and collaborating with each other. So if you're good at pharmaceuticals and Russia and China aren't, how do we work together? Maybe China manufactures chemicals, we manufacture the finished products. How do we work together mm. to get better competitiveness, manufacture more out of our country, get that into offshore markets, create jobs? Very important, um, Faith, you mentioned, we only grew at 0.3% yeah. last year. We, we, we can only grow our economy if we attract mm. domestic and foreign investment and create an export platform. Mm. And I think partly what we're trying to do here is create and enhance an export platform. So that's going to generate hard currency for our country. I like that conversation. You I answered. Think, I, I think <laughs> I'm answered. I think if anyone yeah. was unsure how it works, then I think that puts it succinctly.